Welcome to Life in Lockdown series. We thought this would be a perfect opportunity to learn a little bit more about uh, the individuals behind the job titles and get to know the real people, the values and the insights and the sort of life learnings of those individuals um, that we see and hear about throughout our industry all of the time. And I am delighted today to be joined by John Holman, John has been in our industry for decades and is a pioneer in everything massage. I'll let him tell you a little bit more about himself in a moment, but I'm delighted to welcome John and thank you so much for joining us in this new fun life in lockdown series. John, welcome. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. Thank you very much indeed. Hello, everybody. Um, yes, it's an interesting time, isn't it? Very interesting time. <laughs> so, it is an interesting so, uh, time. It's something that none of us really expected, but we're all kind of journeying through it as, as best we can. So, yeah. John, tell us a little bit about you. Who are you? If, if you had to, to kind of summarise yourself in, in a few words or sentences, how would you describe yourself? Okay, so uh, if we do the basics first, um, uh, I'm uh, John Holman. Um, I've been a massage therapist for the last 30 years or so. Um, I'm married uh, to Sandra, who 43 years in August. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, um, uh, we have two daughters, uh, both married. Uh, my eldest daughter, Tina, has a 12-year-old daughter called Alice, and uh, my youngest daughter, Nikki, has a 7-year-old uh, boy called uh, Ollie. Um, and uh, two female cats. That, so that uh, <laughs> really, that describes... Uh, the basics of uh, uh, of, uh, of me. So uh, uh, people quite often ask me, you know, married for forty three years, and, and I can just about summarise it um, uh, now. Uh, Sandra's extremely tolerant, and I've got a good sense of humour, and it just seems <laughs> to work. <laughs> so. Fantastic! I love it. And so, are you called Granddad, John? <clears throat> uh, Grampy, generally. Grampy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Well, thank you so much. And again, thank you for joining us. We have some questions that we're going to go through. And these are the standard yeah. questions, obviously, we're going to go through with everyone. <clears throat> so there's yeah. some continuity with the, the flow of what we do. So let me start by asking you, what do you believe is the best way to start your day? Uh, well, I practice what I preach. So the best way to start uh, my day uh, is exercise. Um, so um, in normal times, um, I play racquetball on Monday, Wednesday, uh, uh, with a, one of my closest friends, Mike, and we have a personal trainer on Friday. Uh, since lockdown, I've uh, increased that somewhat. So um, in part of my training many years ago, I was a fitness instructor and a weightlifting coach. So I know how to construct a training program. Um, and uh, um, uh, today I do a thing, or today I've already done the uh, thousand rep challenge. Um, um and uh, tomorrow i shall cycle 22 miles and uh, so i do that either five or six days a week so Fantastic. exercise is the best way <laughs> yeah. amazing and they say there's magic in movement don't they and that's kind of proving the point you know massage can be hard work and so you need to stay physically uh, fit and strong and taking six weeks off if you're not used to working um uh, and you go straight back into one you risk injuring yourself so uh, um, I do the things to ensure that when I go back, I can perform like I used to. Amazing. So, Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much. So next yeah. question, what hobbies or interests do you have that light you up? So we've heard a couple there, I think. <laughs> uh, well, you've got a picture of my alter ego. So <laughs> oh, no, I love that picture. I will share that. For those of you that are kind of listening, don't worry. You will get to see John's alter ego too. And it's worth, it's worth it. Yeah. The real John. Yeah. Um, so... Um, uh, I'm afraid I'm a bit of a typical boy, really, uh, Michelle. Um, so um, my great passions in life were all, always Harley Davidson motorcycles, of which you have an image. Um, and um, uh, since I, I gave up riding uh, about five years ago, it was just getting a little bit too dangerous, and Sandra was worried too much about me. So uh, then I got into uh, fairly expensive uh, sports. Sports cars. <laughs> so, so the thing that lights me up most is tinkering. I'm, I'm very, very lucky. I have an AMG Mercedes uh, convertible, which uh, I absolutely adore. So the thing that lights me up most is either tinkering around with that or going out in it. Beautiful. Well, that, that sounds like a perfect way to start the day for me as well. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So that moves me on to what makes you laugh most? And I know you're kind of known for your sense of humour, John. So what, 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 what does light you up? What, what, what makes you laugh? People in conversations, if I wasn't being flippant about it, uh, 
people and conversations um, um, I have the best conversation I've got the best job in the world but um, uh, people and conversations are the thing that usually make me laugh uh, Sandra and I laugh every day well if I tell you the truth she's generally laughing at something that I've done um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, or that I think would work <laughs> um, so so uh, but Sandra and I laugh every day and we've done so for 43 years of our marriage um, I enjoy comedy programs not going out red dwarf the, the silly yeah, stuff yeah. really so yeah. uh, those are the things that make me laugh generally but people yeah, yeah people yeah and not going out yeah. is one of mine as well I must say that's, yeah. that's one of my easy guilty pleasures um, <laughs> and we know what you do for a living but just tell us a little bit more for those people that don't necessarily know all the boards you juggle John tell us a little bit more about sort of what consumes your time in, in sort of work okay so um, as I as you know um, I, I spend all of my life uh, doing what I love uh, and that's uh, that's stuff involved with massage now it's not a case of um, always doing massage I in my clinic I have a, a business as you know um, not a million miles away from you um, in Tame in Oxfordshire um, uh, called Massage Matters I've had that clinic for 30 years um, uh, there are currently five people who work within it we only do massage we do nothing else um, and I limit my time to about 24 hours a week in that particular business um, you're also aware that um, um, uh, I designed a massage system to help therapists prevent injuring themselves, their wrists and backs in particular, and that's called Hydrotherm. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm managing director of that company. Uh, it's actually run more by my wife and uh, my uh, youngest daughter. Um, just occasionally I'll get told what to do and where to go and do it. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm supposedly the MD. Um, um, uh, I work uh, in another fantastic business uh, called The Massage Company with somebody else that you know, Charlie Thompson. Um, and uh, The Massage Company is a franchise idea. Um, so uh, we have uh, four sites. We started with uh, none. And um, uh, we were just, just before lockdown, we were just about doing 4,000 massages a month. Uh, in that business and about to open two new centres. So uh, very rapidly expanding business. So I'm director of massage training for that. Um, and I have an interest in uh, massage for people with cancer, uh, which I've had, I've been teaching it, uh, and it will come as a bit of a surprise to lots of people. I've been teaching massage for people with cancer for 22 years. It's just, I never told anybody about it. And I did that <laughs> in the Royal Surrey Hospital. Um, and, and as you know, I'm involved with a new organisation called the, uh, uh, the Standards Authority for Touching Cancer Care. So uh, my whole life it revolves around the world of massage. <laughs> so. Fantastic. Amazing. And what's the best part of, of, of what you do? What, what is it that kind of, you know, sort of keeps you getting up each morning and going back? So I, I think in, in the sort of daily work of, a, of a, a therapist, because if you cut me in half, I'd say therapist all through the middle. Yeah. Um, so um, the, the greatest thing for me, the biggest thrill that I get is being able to take someone's pain away. Yeah. If you take that away, you've got a friend for life. Yeah. Um, and um, um, I have numerous examples. And by, I am completely proud, it's completely true, I have made every one of my best friends in the world on a massage couch. Oh, um, really? um, yeah, uh, every single one of them. And um, if you take someone's pain away, you've got a friend for life. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's the thing that gives me the biggest buzz. Yeah. Incredible, beautiful. Yeah. Love that. <laughs> uh, what do you struggle with the most in, in your work professional life? What is it that kind of you know either limits you or, or sort of frustrates you the most within what you have to do? That's a really interesting question because on a day-to-day -day basis there's not much um, um I, I occasionally get stuff that uh, i tell you that's more challenging but but with experience you kind of know what to do with it or when to refer on yeah. um so i i don't yeah this is going to sound terrible um i don't do anything that i don't want to do yeah. i spend my entire life doing exactly what i want to do um and that gives me an incredibly happy life <laughs> so, so I do that uh, other people can do the stuff that I don't like doing um, oh. you know um, uh, I have some admin stuff but I spend my entire life doing exactly what I like doing fantastic so, 
<laughs> really don't have that many struggles, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. Um, what new hobby would you get into if time and money were not an issue? So if you weren't limited in any way, what <sighs> new hobby do you think you might start? Um, I think uh, I've got, I've got a, uh, an um, yeah. So an ambition is to write a book at some point. Um, and I think if money and time were no issue, I'd probably learn to play the piano. I, li I like 12 bar blues and stuff like that. So yeah. to learn how to play a piano, I think. Fantastic, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, you can go somewhere you've never been. Where are you going? I would probably take, uh, take I would probably take Sangha to the Maldives. Um, I, I had the great privilege of teaching out there, so I've been out there, and it is truly one of the most beautiful places. I taught out in a place called Hoover Benfushi, yeah, uh, and, and I think it was the sixth best bar in the world out there. Um, and um, I'd, I'd take Sandra there to show her that. Really, that's what I'd like to do. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, I'm sure I'm sure Sandra's packed and ready and waiting. To <laughs> <laughs> she had the opportunity of coming with me and refused because she knew that I would spend all day working. Yeah, uh, so, okay. yeah. so she wouldn't go when I gave her the opportunity. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, I kind of get her point. It, if, if you're going to go, it's nice to go when you can both just enjoy being at leisure. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So that's def definitely on the passport when lockdown lifts it. <laughs> Fantastic. Right. We're going to move into some flashbacks and, and sort of shorter questions and, and sort of um, hopefully easier questions. Um, are you most typically an early okay. or late person? Oh, I'm an, I'm an extreme um, early person so anything from mm, half past four five o'clock in the morning yeah okay early 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 okay yeah and very I, early <laughs> i've just just somebody recommended a book actually was it kind of the 5 a.m sort of um start sort of you know that yeah. that, that kind of oh, period yeah. of time five to six a.m is the key of time for most creatives yeah so yeah you feel like i always feel those time early mornings feel like you're getting to steal the world before anyone else wakes up Love that I feel like I'm kind of in it first. Yeah, yeah. You, you, I reckon two hours in the morning is probably five hours during the day. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So, what's the best single day on the calendar for you? Sunday. Sunday, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> what website do you visit most often? Christopher Ward watches. Okay, nice. Yeah, well, I like mechanical watches, um, so when I collect them, so <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. What keeps you up at night? Sugar. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I try not to take it. <laughs> <laughs> what spirit animal would you be? If you could be any animal, what would you be? Uh, if it was a spirit animal, an eagle. And if it could be any animal, an orangutan. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <That's laughs> very different. Well, they've got strong, hairy arms and an amusing face. So it like, <laughs> fits my profile. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Fantastic. Uh, what's the furthest you've ever been from home? Uh, the Maldives. Yeah. Uh, you go to your favourite restaurant. What do you order to eat or drink? Chicken madras and a, a, a pint of lager. <laughs> Cold beer. What's your all-time favourite fragrance? Um, anything by Tom Ford. Um, so, um, yeah, yeah. So I, that, that's all. I only wear that, but diff different versions uh, during the morning or, or the afternoon and the evening. Yeah. Okay. Nice. What's your must read book, paper, or magazine? Anything by Christopher Hitchens. Okay. So tell me, tell me more. He, I, I don't know his name. Yeah, most people wouldn't. He's an academic. Um, so, and somewhat controversially, um, um, his last book was called God is Not Great. Okay. So, um, so he challenges the belief about religion, uh, societal okay. religion, um, in that. So I find him completely fascinating and his arguments incredibly powerful. So, okay. Yeah. Amazing. Um, what's your favourite song to sing out loud to at the moment? Thunderstruck by ACDC. Okay. Well, which I do when I'm uh, doing my exercise. <laughs> Fantastic, I like it. That, that's something to get you moving. What TV programme have you recently binge watched? Uh, Code 404. Okay. Yeah. Nice. It's, a, it's a Sky original, so I quite liked it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What's your favourite film of all time? Elephant Man. <laughs> what rational fear do you have? Fear of enclosed spaces. 
I don't like anything uh, um, around me or on top of me that, um, that I can't lift or move away from me. Yeah, okay. Where's your favourite place to go to deeply relax? Home. <laughs> yeah. That's always, always a good start, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you, you can only have one beauty product in your bag, what must it be? <laughs> well, I'm going to have to go for Tom Ford. Um, <laughs> yes, I, I desperately don't want to share my other beauty products. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm going to move swiftly on then. <laughs> what spa treatment or experience do you wish you could have right now? Massage. <laughs> I wish I have every week and I pay the therapist to do it. <laughs> so, Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Me too. I, 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 I've never understood these people who work in our profession and then go, oh no, I don't, I don't have treatments. Like, oh my gosh. There could <laughs> never be a time I could get through my week without one. Who has inspired or does inspire you the most? Ooh, who inspires me most? I guess at the moment, Captain Tom Moore. Uh, okay. you, know, you, you cannot, you cannot be failed to move, by, be moved by that man. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, Tom Moore, I think Captain. Tom you kind of needed him as a superhero. He came along at just the right time. Oh well. God, and he just typifies what's best in humanity. Yeah. I, I think he's wonderful, incredibly inspirational. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And I believe they've made him an honorary colonel as well, haven't they? So, oh, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. amazing. Amazing. And I, I, I don't know the rate, latest number. The last I heard it was 30 million. Uh, yes, I believe he's called a halt to it now. <laughs> now. Really? So, yeah, but what a, what a man. Just when we need him. Absolutely. But what an incredible amount. You know, I mean, yeah. I've always said that yeah. our country sort of, you know, derived they on just charity. engaged everybody, didn't it? Did. You know, what's the best? Not the worst, what's the best that we can be? And yeah. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. And I love his strap line about tomorrow will be a good day. Yeah. Yeah, just just beautiful and um, what's the best and worst piece of advice you've you were ever given it was from my first massage te teacher a man called uh, neil slack um uh, when i was i'd already got a very successful business in another industry um and um, his strong advice to me he said john there's no money in massage okay um, and the best piece of advice I gave myself was I thought, well, I bet there is, you just don't know how to make it. <laughs> yeah, nice. And have you wrote him a lovely card since, John, at any time? Uh, well, I, I, I lost touch with him, sadly. That was a, was a long time ago, 31 yeah. years ago. So, um, um, so um, but um, it, it was also a good piece of advice, you know, it just yeah. makes you think. Yeah. Well, it, and it pro probably propelled you into going, I'll prove you wrong. Yeah, well, it's... Um, kind of way. Yeah, yeah it's... Uh, you know, we've, we've had some conversations and, uh, you know, about somebody successful in the world of massage and, uh, and hopefully we'll have some more about that. But um, um, it's just understanding what you need to do. Yeah, yeah absolutely. OK. And what was the most memorable gift you've received? Uh, £25,000. Nice. Yeah. Um, but it... it, it it, this is a, there's a little bit of a story behind it, but um, it was by one of my clients. Okay, um, we were having it was, this is I'm going back quite a long time now, probably 10, 12 years ago. Um, uh, we were having a torrid time when a, uh, a manufacturer that we dealt with set, sold us a dangerous product, and we went and sold it. Um, and they were a much bigger business than us, and um, and uh, we got into a legal battle. And you, boy, can you spend a lot of money on lawyers? Um, um, and um, we were we were we were in quite a lot of uh, financial trouble. And I was explaining this to uh, I was very very stressed at the time, and uh, explaining this to one of my clients, uh, a friend of mine, who's my my the, the friend that I do my exercise with, Mike. Um, and um, um, I needed twenty five thousand pounds to get these people into court, and I didn't have it. Yeah. Um, and he he laid on the couch. And he said, "Well, just tell me about it." And he said, "Well, I'll give you that." He said, then you and I are going to go and get these people. And that's exactly what we did. He gave me the money. We went and won the legal case. Um, I paid him back the money and we've been friends ever since. What <laughs> so, a beautiful story. What a how ama isn't it amazing. Life? Isn't it amazing? And that's all through massage. Yeah. Just laid on my massage couch. We never had a signed piece of paper, never had a contract. He gave me the money. He helped me with the legal case. Uh, he came with me on the day in, in, in court. We won the case. And I gave his money back the following day. <laughs> so, so, yeah, amazing that, gift. Yeah. That is incredible. Incredible. Yeah. And, and God, Mike's the epitome of kind of pay it forward, isn't he? What a, what a beautiful, beautiful gesture. 
yeah it's so um I, and um yeah just an amazing gesture there was no there was no guarantee you'd get that money back there was yeah. nothing um, uh, um but um it, we just believed that what was being done was wrong and it needed correcting and um and it was a much bigger company than us and they could afford the lawyers and we couldn't yeah. um, um but that didn't stop us um so um um, yeah, that's a, the best bit. And he's now one of my closest friends. So. Incredible. And now I know why you've got a kind of years waiting list and stuff like that. The power <laughs> of your massage must be unbelievable, John. <laughs> if that's not a testimony, I don't know what it is. My God, <laughs> that's fantastic. They say everyone has a book in them and you've already mentioned that's something you'd like to do. What would yeah. your book be about, if I uh, need to ask? It, it, it's really simple. How to make money. That it's re it's really simple, um, and and it's not generally what most people would think. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. not about the number of qualifications you've got. It's nothing to do with that. <laughs> so, so um, you know, um, it, it's about uh, it's about how to make money at massage. That's yeah. uh, you know that's what it is. And for me, money is a byproduct of what I do. It's not my yeah. be all and end all. I don't set out to earn, you know, X amount per week or per day or whatever. It just comes because of what I do and the way that I do it. That's, passion and so purpose. That, I always say that passion and purpose delivers profit, doesn't it? You know, and you can, yeah, and, and, and you, uh, you know, it's okay to make money and we must celebrate making money in our businesses. It's the only way any of yeah. us grow and survive. But as you say, yeah. if, that's, if that's the only focus, then of course yeah. that's a quick, quick yeah. way down. But I think that's definitely a book that everyone would want to read and definitely put me down for the <laughs> order. So there we go, there's your motivation to sort of get that started, John. So we have just a couple more questions to finish that are a bit more sort of relevant to, to sort of the timing. And um, what's the okay. most bizarre or craziest thing you've done since life in lockdown? <laughs> if you can share, I mean. Um, <laughs> the craziest thing I did was to actually believe uh, uh, that uh, I could go for a 25 mile bike ride without padded shorts. <laughs> um, it's not possible <laughs> and it's extremely <laughs> uncomfortable to do so. Um, <laughs> so so uh, that is the most ridiculous thing. Uh, so I now, I, now, I now cycle about 22 miles three times a week. So, um, uh, but I've got a padded shorts. <laughs> Lovely, I like that. Lesson learned. What's the big lesson you've learned from life in lockdown if it's not padded shorts? I still have tons to do. I, I can still feel every day with what I do. I'm just doing, I'm just doing the stuff that I never quite had the time to, to do. So uh, the biggest lesson for me is I've still got mountains of stuff to do. Yeah. So, and lots of stuff to share. So Amazing. Yeah, and finally, lesson. what do you hope as an industry, so as a wellness industry, as a wider wellness industry, what do you hope we do more or less of as a result of life in lockdown and having this time to change pace and, and sort of maybe reflect more or analyse deeper? Well, I think the big, the big one for me is something that I've been doing for a very long time. Um, and I, I just believe it's time that the industry got its facts right about massage and cancer because they've been wrong for 50 years. Yeah. Um, I looked into the entire history of where all this stuff went wrong. Um, and um, and um, uh, I, I've known for a very long time that um, you know, massage is hugely beneficial. To yeah. people with uh, with cancer, so I think more than anything else, uh, it's about time the industry started to understand the facts about massage and cancer, yeah. um, uh, and what benefits that we can bring uh, uh, to it. Um, I've done it for uh, sorry, I've done it for 22, 23 years um, uh, continuously in my clinic. I wasn't insured at the time; uh, you couldn't get insurance, but yeah. now you can. It's starting to change. Uh, I'm absolutely passionate about passionate about it, um, and I've done it as you know within the confines of a hospital for nearly 22 years. Yeah. Um, so I knew that the industry had got it wrong, absolutely. but sometimes the industry has to catch up to this stuff. Yeah. Um, and so uh, spreading spreading that knowledge and just welcoming people in, in, into our businesses and, and for massage for the benefits it provides. You're not going to hurt somebody 
who's had cancer, if they can walk into your clinic, the chances are you can treat them. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well said, fantastic. Thank you so much. And I know that has been a, a big passion of yours and uh, you know, well done for sort of flying that flag and sort of making the difference. <laughs> thank you. John, thank you so much for your time in our Life in Lockdown series. You are our first. Um, so delighted to sort of do this with you this morning. And uh, yeah, hopefully we're gonna read that book soon and we're all start <laughs> landing the order sort of links. Um, we'll yeah. give you probably a couple of weeks to kind of get yourself into the rhythm, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure, Michelle. It's lovely to see you. And uh, yeah, we'll get together for a coffee and uh, chew over the rest of the things with the industry and what we can do. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Have an amazing day. Take care. Bye, bye, bye for now. Take care. Bye bye now.